Hey friends, my name is C, and today we have a new video for IGCSC Geography. And today we have a video for sediment, and it's 1.7 for urbanization. And here are the specifications from the website. And in this video, we have one case study, which is a rapidly growing urban area in the developing country and migration to it. And we'll look at Mumbai in India. So we'll start with some urbanization notes. So as mentioned in the last video, urbanization is a process by which the proportion of a population living in or around twins and cities increases through migration and natural increase. So basically the, uh, the population in an urban area increases due to different factors. For example, right here, higher birth rates in urban areas, rural urban migration, and better, better quality of life in urban areas, which includes better sanitation, better job opportunities, and higher wages. And urbanization causes rural urban migration and can cause a decline in rural population as people move from rural areas to urban areas. Which means that the rural areas there will be lots of villages or like towns that are empty. An example of urbanization can be seen in the increase in mega cities. And for example, in 1950 there were only two mega cities, namely New York City and Tokyo. However, 50 years later, in 2000, in the year 2000, the number of megacities increased to 18 compared to 2. And then we have squatter settlements. So slums or squatter settlements, they're the same thing, describes an area of poor quality housing. And slums are typically found in parts of the inner city in developed countries and in older parts of cities in developing countries. And here's an example of slums. And here are some notes for slums housing or squatter settlements. And these settlements are usually densely populated because um, lots of people live in one single area. This means that these types of housing are high, uh, high density housing. And they also have um, like small living space and poor water sanitation. And here are some statistics for you to know. 32% of the world's urban population lives in slum at around 980 million people in 2015, which is quite significant. In 2015, right here. Oops, right here. And slums are typically located on land that are unideal, for example, steep slopes and floodplains. Because if the land were to be ideal, like flat land and all those, and like it's not easily flooded, then better housing or like high rise buildings or offices would have been built on it already. And solutions to squatter settlements include government support for low income housing subsidies for home building in urban areas for people in need, and let's say slum upgrade to improve water sanitation and have better electricity. And then we have reducing impacts of urbanization. So there are three main areas of problem that need to be solved in urbanization, mainly uh, environmental, transportation, and urban agriculture. So starting with environmental, there are a lot of issues coming, with, uh, coming from environmental problems uh, for example, pollution, like water pollution, where people like pollute water due to dumping of, let's say, oil or like nuclear waste, or just simply just throwing trash into the river. Air pollution from traffic congestion, as well as noise from traffic, as I mentioned here, like traffic and factories. And possible solutions to the uh, to like these pollutions could be the closure of all factories and control of sources of pollution at source by regulation. And also, this is like, the loss of houses are derelict, which means that they are abandoned. And for the environmental health of the population, it's caused by pollution, as uh, in urban areas, there are a lot of cars, and those cars emit lots of gases, harmful gases, and there are, uh, let's say, carbon dioxide gas in the gases, which worsen the pollution. And a solution to that could be they could introduce, or a government could introduce, cleaner car, for example, electric vehicle, although that might be a little controversial. And here we have transportation issue. And as mentioned previously, air quality is declining due to an increased number of vehicles in the urban areas. But a solution of, uh, to that could be they could employ a park and ride schemes, where basically if let's say this is a city, city, Instead of, go, instead of all cars going into the city, like all cars going in there, we could have a park and ride scheme where there could be like um, this like parking area outside the city where all the cars can park, like cars, 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 and there would be like a bus that could fetch everyone from this area to the city. So this is park and ride scheme. 
And they could also employ a congestion charge, which is what London did, and it's called the London Congestion Charge. And lastly, the government could also subsidize public transport system, and let's say in these places. And then we have urban agriculture. Urbanization leads to a decline in the amount of agricultural land available as people build on those lands, and those lands are described as greenfield site, which we saw in our last video. Greenfield site, where basically it's untouched land, like agricultural land, where, uh, where like companies build their, uh, their buildings on it. And food produced locally have several be uh, added benefits, and it employs the city's population, which increases the quality of life, and it also diversifies the sources of food, so therefore the supply is more secure, and the price of the food or the supply will also be lower because it's locally sourced and locally produced. So here's sustainable development in Curitiba. So here are some notes for Curitiba. So Curitiba is the largest city and the capital city of this state right here in Brazil, which as you can see Brazil is right here and Curitiba is down here. And Curitiba has a population of 3.8 million in 2023 with an area of 432 kilometers squared. And there's a rapid population growth in Curitiba as supported by these um, statistics right here. And this is due to innovative planning and cooperation by the people over there. For example, the citizens in Curitiba prefer public transport over private cars and cheap low technology solutions are used in their place. And here are some problems and solutions in Curitiba. So the problem as with all urban areas is traffic congestion where there are too many cars in the urban areas. So the solution in Curitiba that they, that they employed was to use public transport and they actually developed it quite well. So that's why most people prefer public transport over private cars. And going on from traffic congestion, the cars, they emit poisonous gas such as CO2, right? So therefore, uh, public transport is encouraged as well. Or like let's say they can use bicycles or even walk. And the way to integrate um, these um, public transport into people's life is that the government actually uh, integrate bus routes and cycle path into uh, urban life or like in the city. And here are how the solutions help Curitiba. So number one, there are fewer cars on the road as more people prefer public transport like bus. And there are more pedestrians and cyclists and more citizens using public transport as mentioned before. And this all leads to better air quality as there are less cars on the road, so less poisonous gas, gas is uh, emitted from the, from the cars. So here we have one case study, which is a rapidly growing urban area in the developing country and migration to it. And we'll look at Mumbai in India. So starting with some notes in Mumbai of Mumbai. Mumbai is a city in India with a population of 21.3 million in 2023. And it has a land area of 603.4 kilometers squared. This means that it is a very, very densely populated at around 35,000 people per kilometer squared. And here's where the location of Mumbai, as you can see here. For example, um, the, the average income. And we'll focus on this suburb right here, which is called Dharavi. Dharavi is a suburb in Mumbai and it lies between two railway lines in Mumbai. So here's the situation features for Dharavi. So here are reasons why Dharavi is growing rapidly. Number one, there are good job opportunities present in Dharavi. For example, there's laundry and sewing clothes. And there's also better housing, better healthcare, and higher wages in Mumbai compared to other parts in the country. So people move from other parts of the country to Mumbai, which causes urbanization of Mumbai. So as you can see here, a rapidly growing urban area. And another reason why Dharavi is growing rapidly is because of high birth rates. And lastly, contraceptives and sterilization are widely available in India. And just, it's, un, it's not complete, just let me just cancel this part up. So here's some notes on rural urban migration in Mumbai. Uh, Mumbai is the financial capital of India, which makes it even more attractive place for the rural migrants. So more rural migrants move into Mumbai, hoping for better jobs and higher wages. So as, you, as we know that there are more people moving into Mumbai, this means that there's a shortage of residential areas as there are so many people in Mumbai and there's only so much space they can live in. This gives rise to squatter settlements or slums like Dharavi. 
and migrants are employed in low-wage jobs due to lack of skills. So because all the migrants that move into Mumbai, some could be high, uh, like highly skilled and some could be like lowly skilled. So the highly skilled workers or migrants could be working in like high paid jobs, but the ones who have, uh, like a, have lack of skills will work in low wage jobs. And because of how many people are in Mumbai, this gives rise to congestion. And this means that 55% of people choose to walk instead of uh, like driving cars due to the number or due to like the effect of traffic congestion. And as you can see in rural areas, there's an increased mechanization of farming. So people move to ch uh, choose to move away as job opportunities in the farms in rural areas decreases. And here are the problems of slums or squatter settlements in Dharavi. So number one, we have water pollution. As industries in Mumbai dump untreated industrial waste along with untreated sewage into the Mithi River, which means that it will pollute the river really badly, which causes water pollution. And talking about the river, there's a flood risk as uh, the, the, river, the river once flooded and a quarter of Mumbai was underwater in July 2005. And this cost the city uh, $10 million and many lives were lost. And talking about congestion, there's also an air pollution problem in Dharavi where exhaust gases from vehicles and smoke from burning rubbish or burning trash. And there's also a problem for disease where there are open sewers in Dharavi and poor sanitation which all leads to water pollution and like let's say poor sanitation and decreased quality of life. And here's a solution to all the slums or squatter settlements in Dharavi. Number one, there's this project called Vision Mumbai and it's a plan to demolish the slums and uh, basically they will, the developers will rebuild the, uh, the land to something else that's better. Because they know that the slums are built on land worth $10 billion so the developers will rebuild 1.1 million low-cost houses that come with water supply, sanitation, and healthcare, which means that the quality of life in uh, Dharavi will increase drastically. But um, the developers will have to plan everything out, like so urban planning will be really important in that area. So number two, another solution, or it's being employed, is that public transport is being built in Dharavi. So this metro line, also known as the Aqua Line, is the first underground system in Mumbai and it is 84% completed as of 2023 so it's almost done. So this will encourage its citizens to take the underground metro in order to reduce air pollution as the government is hoping that they will take the, the metro underground, the underground metro so there will be less cars on the road so less uh, emission of harmful gases which means that there will be less air pollution and ultimately higher standard of living. And lastly combating flooding the Mithi River is being dredged and widened to allow faster flow of river water and to widen the river channel so it can hold a greater volume of water. So this will basically reduce the chance of flooding as the river is wider so it can hold more water so when it rains, it won't flood as easily. And that's it for the information. And that's it for this last video for settlement and I hope you all enjoyed this video. And if you need any more learning resources or any teaching resources, you can check out my website in the description or you can type it out in your browser at www.yemitsteasy.com And I hope you all enjoyed this video and I'll see you all in the next video. Here's to learning made easy.